Well, I thought I'd do a quick video between storms. Made a lot of progress on the greenhouse. Look, real door. Got the poly on. And it's doing pretty good. It's been through some big downpours. Let's go inside and see what's going on. We've expanded it. That's eventually where the outer wall will be. Next season, I'll take that front off, dig that out with a loader, and do a stone wall around the outer edge. And we'll have five more grow beds on this side. And the hot tub is going to go down at the end there. Wood stove will be on that panel. I'll just put a 4x8 uh, uh, sheet of plywood there with uh, metal an inch away and the wood stove in front of that. Vented out right about the upper square there and uh, then I got to build a spark arrestor on the chimney just in case it's a very burnt clean burning stove but you never know and I sure don't need embers on the plastic roof which is temporary obviously I'm set up for poly hard poly corrugated panels that's what we're going with eventually but another $350 this season was a no-no so this is 22 hour piece of poly instead and it's only four mil but it's been through some heavy rains and does great it's stretched tight enough that it just runs right off boy you learned one thing quick in a greenhouse uh, we just had a big downpour even though the rain doesn't come through all the condensation comes off the roof so I covered my nice saw wondered how it was getting wet standing in here felt like it was raining in the greenhouse it was just the condensation every time a drop hits the roof down comes the condensation so all this stuff is vulnerable to get wet but it'll survive anyway back to the grow beds this is our temporary floating bed and it's doing fine but the roots are getting dirty it doesn't have a proper filter in front of it what I'm going to do is build a filter right back there swirl filter particulate filter get all the junk out and this row of grow beds will be set up for floating raft and all these will be gravel so far i'm really liking the new granite 18 dollars a ton so that's about nine dollars per grow bed that's hard to beat i have enough to fill this bed but i'm going to let the lettuce mature first or else i gotta go away for a week when i come back i may transfer the lettuce into here and fill that grow bed i have the gravel sitting in the trailer Lettuce is doing great. The uh, auto siphons are just fabulous. I've never had a problem with them. Uh, once in a while, one will come a little high, but that just drives out any cutworms in the soil, in the gravel. Tomatoes are doing real well. Sorry about the dull day. We're going to have rain all day today. This is sort of between. It's deafening in here when it pours, so I waited to take this because I'm leaving. And I wanted to bring you guys a little up to date. Everything's looking very good. I mean, the lettuce, turns out, the lettuce we thought wasn't doing very well in the grow bed, uh, that was a cutworm. So, I think I showed that in another video. I made these extra collars. And the tall one, you put that in the top of the funnel. Right now, I've got a medium-sized one in there because I'm bringing the water up enough for these seedlings. You know, if it stays down two inches, which is where you want it eventually, the, the roots don't get in the uh, water. So when you're planting seeds or doing seedlings, just throw a ring in, bring the level up. Makes no difference on the siphon. The siphon still works perfectly, it just brings the level up. So that's why that's in there right now. You can see the little extra collar. You just lift that out when, when they're mature and the roots are big and go down to a normal level. Okay. These seedlings are all doing great. They actually came from a neighbor's place. Leftovers as my wife was helping her put her garden to bed. Anyhow, let's see. This lettuce, yeah, the bib's doing great. It loves it now that I got the cutworm out. And I did that by late raising the level and flooding him out. And sure enough, he popped to the surface. He was hiding in the gravel during the day. Beet greens, doing great. Should have knock the peppers off these the one plant where the pepper got knocked off when we planted it look at it it's covered with new peppers and i think it's balanced better it won't fall over the way the others did here we're having a problem with caterpillar worms i sprayed it with a pepper 
cucumber spray, which drove them up onto the leaves, and I was able to crush them all this morning. And then we're going to get the uh, the proper stuff that'll kill them without hurting the fish. I, the name of it's not on the tip of my tongue, but the guys on the forum all filled me in on that. Love the forum. Man, we're into wood gasification. We're talking about everything. I've never seen such a great bunch of guys. And here is the cabbage doing real well. Of course, those were the broccolis. These guys have already grown up onto the second screen. Here are the peas and the soybeans. And we got parsley and uh, basil and different things growing back here. A little peppermint. And you can see the water coming in. I got it coming in in two places on this one. This pipe eventually will go to the other, go into the filter right here and on to around behind the spa or a hot tub, whatever we're going to have right here, and onto the row of grow beds. And we'll have a walkway at that end to go around behind the grow beds. And we'll have barrels soaking up sun all along that edge after it's dug out. Well, this winter we'll put them right on the grass. I just have to level it out. We'll put a dozen barrels full of water all the way down. Soaking up the heat. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you can see we got a screen door on that I've been carrying around for years. We've moved twice since we bought that at the yard sale. <laughs> and right up there is where that fan will go. It's an automatic fan. I've had that for years. Somebody gave up on it. It's kind of a quirky thing. It takes a geek like me to keep it running. And I, you can see I have to cover the thermometer, otherwise you get a very false reading with the sun beating on it. And right now we're about 7 degrees above the outside temp, even on a rainy day. Now this will eventually be a solar absorber. You can see it laying here right now. That's where the excess bypass water from the pump is now pumping through all that. It's 100 feet of black and 50 feet of green and goes into the filter, which I've done a video on before. And uh, today is not doing much, I'm sure, but yesterday it was making probably three, four degree difference and running all day long, that makes a big difference. And that wasn't even a sunny day. When the sun comes out, that'll all be up here. There's going to be a board there with that whole thing mounted to it in a coil. I don't think I have to worry about draining it in the greenhouse. I hopefully it will never get that cold with the wood stove and everything. I've already got the bracket up there. I'm going to put Unistrut across this area and have two 55-gallon barrels up there with a thermal siphon um, set of pipes over here going up to it. And the bypass water will go through that system back to the fish tank. And I think that will bring the temperature up quite a bit in the winter. Our winter days tend to be clearer than right now. Uh, it can be cold out, but man, that sun's intense. So, kind of fun to look forward to that, seeing how that all works. Nothing much changed in the fish room. Everybody back here is happy. I've closed it in better because we've already had a killing frost here in the mountains, so I had to get closed up more. Of course, that'll all be nice wood boards like our uh, garden shed is when we're done. I have to board all that up still. But the first thing I had to do was keep the heat in. So that's all working fine. Filter, I haven't cleaned it since, uh, boy, it's been on there for a few weeks now. Haven't had to clean it. It's keeping the water crystal clear. It's really amazing. I just have a few fish in here, but look at that water. I mean, there's no light in here. And you can see the bottom nicely, even with the aerator going. And this one, I got rid of the bluegills. I put them out in the pond. I kept a few in that first tank with the comet. I've had a lot of trouble with them, with the fungus. And uh, this is their tank. That's going to be drained, scrubbed. Going to have a new manifold soon so that each tank individually drains down there. And, uh, of course, this is my big drain, so I can dump it fast when I want to clean them. But that one will get... get uh, you know, Clorox and so forth, bleach, uh, clean it all out and get it ready for other fish. And here are our catfish. They're doing great. Came from the same source, but they're tough. They love to eat. They're healthy. They're real characters. I'm going to put some pipes in there so they can have some fun playing. Fish love to play. They're characters. When I first got had the comets and I got the bubbler going, they were doing 
somersault through the bubbles. I never saw anything like it. They were having an absolute blast. Unfortunately, during uh, startup, I lost all but one comet. And he's still doing fine. But there are the catfish. And look how nice and clear that water is. And when I showed on another video, that was super pea soup green when I put that filter on in three days. It was this clear. And it's just a poly filter in a drum. So simple. So cheap. $8.50 $8 for a bag of poly. I'm not even using the whole bag uh, at Walmart. Okay, so that's about it from Smoky Mountain Aquaponics. Uh, we'll be closing up some more up here. I still have some vents open at the top of the uh, plate there. So that's got to get done. A lot to do still. Can't wait for the whole thing to be done and I can get on to other projects. Um, by the way, my roof vents, I'll show you that real quick. I cut some foam that I've had kicking around for years to close the roof vents up for the winter. Don't think I need them anymore unless we get a really hot Indian summer, which could happen. But uh, that's what that is up there. Just ran them through the uh, little table saw. And they're four inches thick, I think. Or three inches thick, something like that. I cut them five inches wide. And in the summer, that, of course, vents right off the highest hottest part of the greenhouse does a great job you get a chimney effect and the winds tend to blow from that direction so you get a vacuum it really sucks the heat off that worked great but after killing frost the whole uh, idea was to get closed up and cheap poly for this year next year we'll spend some more money on the covering anyway that's it see you guys on the forum take care